welcome back uh, and we'll continue our discussion on cultural differences uh, or rather the lifestyle differences i'll put it uh, between india and the us so one of the things that i wanted to ask you that uh, when it comes to job search like we were like we were talking factoring a lot of time a lot of uh, importance is given to the whole networking aspect which apparently when you are in india and when you do your job search in india that aspect is not really a very strong component i mean you directly apply either online companies or probably maybe uh, through the campus uh, recruitment uh, drives but uh, in the us i mean a lot of students stress a lot on the whole networking aspect and not only students everybody advises you on job search would probably talk about the networking aspect of uh, this thing which is again not something which everybody is very used to uh, so what was your experience in the whole thing i mean did you have to really network and what exactly do you mean by networking i mean how did you go about this whole networking aspect um yeah so i think that's a big difference between indian job search at, at least from my experience because back in india i undergrad it was always on campus recruitment here there are a few firms that do come on campus okay. but i i'd say 90% of the students who get their jobs apply to do it by themselves um at the end of the day applying for jobs is a numbers game i feel like the more you apply the better chance you have it it also boils down to luck but everyone's going to tell you that network a lot and i totally agree by that and by networking it's just uh, i think a couple of avenues you have is you cold email and hope they reply you connect on linkedin and hope they reply or you connect with alumni and then build those contacts up hmm. uh at the end, i wouldn't say that a referral will get you an interview it won't uh sometimes it may like probably 20 25% of the times it it will get you an interview once you get to an interview stage it's again all up to you uh getting to the interview is the harder part but networking is important because not for a referral or if you look at a job and you want a referral i think it is more important because if a job opens up even in the future they would think of you and they'll put in your put in your name of okay. a good word for you but yeah and and to answer your second question how do you do it exactly it's just uh, there is no correct answer I, in my opinion you just have to reach out reach out reach out it might get frustrating at times uh, m- not even might it will but you just have to persevere because uh, that's how i think things work Be- uh, because if you just apply online in the careers portal your resume is going to be one of a thousand and there's almost a zero chance that you will it, it will be looked at i mean it will be looked at but people who have contacts in the firm will get higher preference obviously um the way that i think about the job process is a little different um networking is something as agastya said is important um so my university has like a pretty strong alumni network and uh, we have like online mixers before covid they used to have offline mixers also but nowadays i don't think um, they do that anymore it's just uh, the online ones and sometimes they uh, like a few local companies around the city around la they would come and they would take you to their office they'll show you around they'll tell you what is the kind of work that you do um cs industries might be there might not be there um then also my department has this thing called twitter be trek which is essentially uh, recruiters from a bunch of companies come mm-hmm. together and uh, you sign up you put in an application to be a part of that event and uh, they screen your application they screen your cv and then if you do end up landing a spot you essentially spend the entire day with those recruiters you literally go on a trek okay. and uh, you talk to them they talk to you and you know if things go well wonderful okay so i um, was just about to ask you when you say it was a trek it was actually a trek it was actually a trek <laughs> okay. yeah yeah <laughs> that's just the name that they give that event. yeah but uh, so you actually 
yeah. go on a hiking <laughs> yeah. trip for, yeah. for the whole day with them. Okay. For the whole day with them. That's it. interesting, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, but sometimes, you know, again, coming back to that same point, I mean, sometimes being an introvert, having mean discussions or getting to the point about your career in such uh, scenarios or at such events, or even if it's a proper mixer, you know, where you uh, where everybody is in a maybe a conference room or not or a hall eating, drinking, mm. kind of, you know, how do you make that connection? Is sometimes a bit of a challenge. Is what I felt. Uh, I mean, not just for for most of the students. I mean, there might be some who really are great at it, but uh, so, how was your experience, Gargi? Did you go to the trek, first of all? I did not go to the trek because the last couple of years, not a lot of CS companies were showing up for the trek. Okay. But um, from the mixers, the online mixers that we had, mm-hmm. um, my experience is to ask them brief questions, but questions that would uh, lead to the topic of a career. Okay. So you sort of ease into the conversation. You ask them what they do. You ask them what their experience has been like. You ask them uh, for advice for someone who's starting, just starting their career or, you know, um, their corporate experience, their advice for people who are just stepping into corporate, stuff like that. And then you gradually build on top of that and then... Uh, then you make the question like, <laughs> hey, are you hiring? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's coming back to the yeah. same thing that you said earlier. Right? Yeah. That you can't come directly to the point, can you give me a job? No, <laughs> yes. no you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, how was your, um, did you have, Agastya, any such kind of events at NYU? I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we had kind of every month we had these offline mixes with alumni um, and we had a couple of career fairs as well. So okay. at career fairs, I think it was more challenging because they aren't, they, they are just recruiters from a million companies and almost they see three to 4,000 students that day. So I think it's extremely important for you to stand out and the way you do it is like Gargi said, you strike a conversation, try and I mean, they are there for hiring, but still, you ask, you have to ask the question, oh, are you hiring for this role and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, at Mixers, I found it was much easier. Okay. One, because the number of students who interact with the people coming in is much smaller. Uh, you have a lot of shared experiences because they are alumni. Mm-hmm. And I feel you can actually ask the direct question for people who are just two years or three years out of college because they completely understand where you're coming from right because if someone asked me now i know that at the end of the three minutes the question is are you going to hire i would rather cut the three minutes and uh, no we aren't hiring or yes we are. so uh for, for, for me the mixers were much much more helpful okay. although it didn't lead to any hiring opportunities yeah <laughs> uh, just for uh just, just to see what paths people are in okay. currently years post graduation and just talking to them and I think uh, that was super helpful talking to alumni. Okay. Career fairs, what happens is because there are so many people, both companies and students, uh, the interactions, the the gravities of those interactions are much more diluted. Okay. Right. Um. Now coming to you know we discussed a lot about classroom interaction jobs and all that but in general i mean overall your life in the us uh, let's talk a little about that uh, how how different is your general life uh, in between what it was in india and in us and uh, again coming to that point right you know there are a lot of uh, uh, you sometimes hear uh, incidents about racial racial discrimination happening at a few places, you hear these news, uh, not only in the US, but in other countries as well. So, what has been your experience about that? Did you really f- always feel that you are an alien out there or did you feel that no, you are part of that society that you are living in currently? How does it, uh, what is your experience in that regards? Yeah, I can go. So, yeah, so you lived in... Uh, New York. New York for a long time and you're in LA. Yeah. One of the two of the most, uh, I would say, cosmopolitan or multicultural 
cities in the US. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that that plays a lot into this answer is that I didn't really face that. Luckily, uh, there are incidents that I know of for my uh, that my friends have faced, but they are isolated. I think most of it has to do with the fact that New York and LA are extremely cosmopolitan. We are going to find at least hundred nationalities in there, and uh, people they, they at, at least. From an Indian perspective, they don't look at Indians like there are some aliens out there. Mm -hmm. That might have been the case 30 years ago in New York. I don't know at all. Mm -hmm. But at least for the past two years, that wasn't the case. And uh, in general, like, because there is a pretty, pretty well-established Indian community in, in New York. And I think at this point in every city in the U.S. almost, at least the big ones. I know in Texas, there is Chicago, West Coast, East Coast. Uh, you, you aren't uh, at a disadvantage if you want to try and mingle with people of your same ethnicities. Uh, but I didn't face any major issues. Okay. Uh, one, and this was a genuine shock, was the crime uh, rates. Because the gun culture is a little alarming compared to India. Mm -hmm. uh, you get these uh, notifications on your phone saying, okay, there have been shots here, there have been shots there. Not that you are in the line of fire anytime. I mean, you ho hopefully aren't. But, yeah. but it, it is much, much higher than what you'd see in Hyderabad or Bhutanjur. And that's a shock. Okay. I that was the only shocking thing I felt in my two and a half, three years in the U.S. It's that, why are there so many guns out there? But other than that. So do you own one now or not yet? Not yet. I don't think I'm allowed to own one in Texas yet. Uh, we actually had, in my first semester, we actually had this thing in my college where we got an alert. We were in class saying that, oh, shots have been fired in the building. Uh, take cover and all that. I was I was scared, but uh, it turned out it was just a false alarm, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Um, racial discrimination on a personal level, I don't think I've faced that. Um, I believe that as long as you are able to converse well in English, it generally works out. Um, and yeah, being in LA definitely helps because California is quite forward thinking in that sense. Um, and yeah, LA does have a lot of crime, especially the area around USC. I would not call it the safest area. Okay. I remember uh, the apartment where I'm living right now. Um, I remember reading in the news just before I got onto the plane that um, a security guard outside the building had been shot and they could not save him. No. Uh, yeah, so although you thankfully do not end up in the direct line of fire, there is always a risk. Um, there was an active armed suspect in on the campus in the university. Mm -hmm. Um You'll, hear, you'll have a lot of alerts like Augusta mentioned about um, I don't know I'm suspect here or whatever things like that mm -hmm. um, all you can do is be aware uh, know what numbers to call in, in case of an emergency uh, every university has its own way of uh, handling emergencies I feel 911 is one thing but for USC specifically, we have campus police that they call DPS, and they have the same authority around USC as LAPD would have. So it's quicker to reach out to them. So whenever there is an orientation about safety and how to handle emergency situations, it is important to attend that session and um, you know note down all the details. Uh, in case you ever need them and on a personal level i always carry a pepper spray on me so oh, okay. yeah, that yeah 
never fortunately did you i mean unfortunately never you to use it no no okay, no never okay. never hopefully never don't have yeah. to, but yeah hopefully i don't have to but yeah, <laughs> yeah. but but then again uh, coming to the point so the universities uh, do conduct uh, regular sessions on awareness yeah. of safety and uh, yeah. other things yeah. yeah they do yeah okay. they do take care uh, of because yeah yeah they are big on it and like our game mentioned uh, nyu also has this on campus nyu safety officers patrolling nypd is there um but i think the the main thing is that people students everyone know what are the dangerous areas what are not safe exactly. what are pretty safe mm-hmm. and it just comes down to the fact that you if you know that is not really safe please just don't go out there at night or something like that okay. you actually don't put your uh, life in the way of danger and i think then you'll be fine it's yeah yeah and and outside uh, i mean apart from the college life that you have your academics and all that in terms of what you typically known as extracurriculars right what you call extracurriculars how active uh, or what are the i mean have you been both of you have been were you involved in any other activities on campus maybe whatever i mean sports cultural arts something like that or how big are the events on campus yes uh, so events on campus are pretty huge uh Uh, uh me personally i think the the scope for master students is a little less compared to undergrads at least that was my experience uh in general the number of clubs and the opportunities here uh, on campus for extracurricular activities is huge but because masters in general is such an intensive program and you have all these other stuff you need to adapt to uh not many students uh try to go into those because if even if it's like 24 months two years program it's it's a pretty short duration for you to get up to speed with the subject and then do your internships and stuff uh, but in general if you do if you are interested in any of those you have a lot of opportunities mostly undergrad focused but uh, uh you do have lots on campus to do uh, and i think in general the infrastructure at at least these huge schools usc for example or Yeah, and why in my case uh, do have a lot of good infra available uh, but again I, i think for what we use to our extent even uh, it it's not that different at least in my uh, experience from the indian education system because uh, back in india also and my my university had all these uh, like well established clubs and well established infrastructure so you do have opportunities here but it's not some mind blowing thing compared to indian okay. university and how about you what was your experience uh at usc i did find that uh, there were more options than for me when i was in india so in india i used to go to pict with uh, in pune it's like um a small college so only three branches of engineering um so in comparison to that um the amount of clubs and student associations on usc campus is pretty big you also have um a lot of cultural and religious clubs so for instance we have a pcso here which is a hindu student organization we have like an ais association of indian students similarly i think there is an association for chinese students for korean students for uh, i believe also japanese students um i have seen regular bible classes and you know like it's pretty inclusive you'll find whatever you want on campus um for more like atheist activities you have um uh, uh like different student associations which i was a part of where i volunteered and like help organize events so our focus was mostly to organize events before exams so like students could come relax a little bit have good food play games and then you know uh, go back and study with a better mood hopefully um <laughs> uh, yeah so um did that, did that i, I mean, <laughs> it did it did okay. yeah yeah we did have like pretty successful events and then 
also when I was just walking around campus I had like a few people who recognized me from the event come up and talk to me and like hey that was pretty cool we had fun and okay. yeah yeah so it's it's uh it's for you to go out and explore and find for yourself what is available on your campus um and how involved you want to be with whatever activities it is that, that you prefer yeah uh and uh, as we conclude this uh, conversation today uh, anything any kind of uh, you know some experience that you would like to share or something say something really funny that you experienced in this whole two years or that you have been living in the us something that you thought was completely out of uh, like a shocking experience um uh, not exactly sh of shock value but one really small nuance i got was that at least I, uh i think we uh, in india we have this thing of nodding our head a lot and even sideways and upwards and downwards i think i still can't figure it out <laughs> if it's the opposite here or if we just don't nod our head it's a lot because yeah, okay. i think that's that's one thing which is a pretty small nuance but uh, it kind of throws off the other person when you're communicating with them mm -hmm. uh uh so i think that was one funny uh thing which i had at the wake of weeks with my professors okay uh other than that one general advice i would like to give anyone who's come for a masters is that although you have all these things to tackle uh it's always a you you think you might know everything before coming here but there is going to be uh some stuff which you don't and you have to keep all that stress aside and just explore for a couple of days at least and just enjoy for for a while because this is at the end of the day a new experience for anyone coming from india sure yeah. how would you guys any anything um else? so nothing funny or shocking as such but um one thing i was very pleasantly surprised by is the academic flexibility that universities here offer you like you get to choose your own courses you have a set deadline where you can change your courses like let's say you go to a couple of classes and you don't like them yeah let me try something else yeah you could drop the course and pick up something take another course exactly right? yeah. And I have done that multiple times, and uh, it has always been uh, like an interesting thing to see uh, different courses, the way that uh, things are taught. And I would highly recommend uh, just studying for the sake of studying. Like, if if that is your thing, beyond all of these challenges, and ultimately, if you want to work. Uh, or if you want to go for a postdoc, whatever your aims in life are, um, you can enjoy the academic part of the life here as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and just one thing which I remember is that the professors here are super friendly compared to what I expected. Definitely, definitely. Uh, they are like they are like senior students than professors or teachers in the school who want to be strict with you they aren't that strict they are just they they're much more friendly that was a shock but a welcome shock so yeah definitely definitely agree with them okay uh, thank you agastya and gargi uh, we'll probably have some more discussions on some more topics in the coming uh, weeks or uh, months uh, and uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time uh, so good night and we'll catch up again. Yes. Thanks for having us today. Thank you. Bye. Bye.